I'm back. Kittens are a lot of work. This is a blog about whether or not there are soulmates and if you can actually have a relationship with no fighting. It's elusive. It's like the white whale. I don't really get personal too often. This is mainly about astrology and psychology, but um, I grew up in a family where my parents were always fighting. I prayed that they would get a divorce. I know it's kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> Statistically, people that come from broken families, families that are not very great examples of love, have a more difficult time in relationships because they don't have an example and they don't know what a good relationship looks like. So. I'm going to tell you what a good relationship looks like. So first off, today is my anniversary. I met my husband three years ago. He is a child of divorce. We were both struggling in our own ways with believing in soulmates. I didn't even believe that marriage was a good idea. I thought marriage was a way that you can trap somebody or that someone can trap you. I know, it's pretty cold, but that's what I thought. That's what I saw. After being in a relationship for 10 years where we were fighting constantly, you know the kind of couple where you think that the whole neighborhood has heard all of your fights and that you're the weirdo rednecks that everyone's hoping move out? Yeah, that was me. I was a disaster in relationships. I did a lot of soul searching and this is what I came up with. First question to ask yourself. When you get into conflict in your life, are you blaming the person you're with? Most likely the answer is yes. That kind of logic will never get you anywhere. Most people have each other in their lives. That's the first person that they're going to attack. If your instinct is to attack your spouse and that's your first line of defense when things are difficult in your life, you are in the wrong. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. You are in the wrong. Everything that you do and say will be held against you in the court of love. If you're attacking the person that you're with, you're seeing them as the enemy. They're seeing you as the enemy. There's a whole big world out there and there probably are legitimate enemies. Maybe not even in the form of people, but diseases and all sorts of things that you should be afraid of. Your spouse shouldn't be one of them. If you are putting all of your anger onto them, then what you're doing is you're not doing your own soul searching. Soul searching, what is that? It's where Everybody has weaknesses. Everybody has things about themselves, insecurities that they hate, things that they do that they despise about themselves. Most of us are not willing to look at that and actually face it. If you are in a relationship, most likely your spouse or your significant other is putting their negativity onto you and you're putting it onto them. That's what most people do. Probably 70% of relationships, and I'm being very sparingly with that amount, put negativity onto each other because they're not willing to face their own insecurity. How does this interact with astrology? If you've looked at my blogs about the North Node, South Node and looking at your destiny, the soulmate concept is only going to come into your life when you have looked at your South Node and your South Node is all of that stuff that you don't want to deal with, negative traits about yourself. But it's not just South Node. It can be found in other areas of your chart. For instance, if you have an Aries Moon. Aries Moon, they consider their own emotions more important than everyone else's usually. They can have an outburst and then want to just like go along as if it never happened. Some of these qualities that an Aries Moon has are negative. And that goes with every position that you have in your chart. There are negatives and positives. Part of conquering your own demons is to look at all of those negative traits that you have. Like maybe you're passive aggressive because you have a Libra in Mars. Everything negative, conquer it. Look at it, analyze it. Don't be afraid of it. Become all of the positive traits. Work past all of the negative traits. Like attracts like. The law of attraction. Life is going to bring towards you like a magnet things that you are attracting because of your energy. If you have this positive energy wanting to be a source of change in your life, you're going to attract people that are also wanting to be a source of change in their life. And that's when you can enter into the soulmate terrain. It's this magical land most people don't believe exists where you can live day in, day out with someone you love without conflict. And I, and I don't mean that you're not going to have disagreements. What I mean is that you will never see each other as the enemy. There will never be a fleeting thought in your mind that they are out to get you. You will not look across the room and see a saber-toothed tiger waiting to pounce on you. You will see someone that is there to support you and you're there to support them because that's what it should be. So for the 20, 30, 10% of you, you can safely say that you do your own soul searching. You lived single for five years and thought. 
you overcame your alcoholism, you realized that you have anger problems and you started taking control of that, you realized you have hatred for men and that you couldn't stand being in a room with them and you would blame them for your feelings about your father and you realized it. If you are one of the rare few people that realized all of your insecurities and have come to face it, congratulations. You're on to the next test. All right, next level. It's about not just stopping negativity, but putting positivity forward. Once you have conquered your own demons and started to realize your own flaws and see yourself clearly, then you're not projecting onto other people. Good. It's time to put positivity forward. This means you have to put positive energy towards the people that you care about. That means work. This is where they say relationships require a lot of work. It's easy to be lazy. It's easy to get comfortable. It's easy to put on the pounds and eat the cupcakes and sit and watch TV and not think about any new changes that you should be making in your life or ideas of what would make your significant other happy and to just let life happen because once there's no conflict, it's really nice. It's comfortable. It's great. One of the troubles is that your sex life, your romantic life, your internal eager energy for life, all these things are going to suffer if you get too comfortable. The way to not get too comfortable is to constantly be on the offensive about ways that you can be a positive in the lives of the people you love. Making sure that you're kind, that you're putting forth the effort. Leaving nice little notes for them, washing their car, this is getting that vacation that you know that they want. This is saying the right thing at the right time when you know that they're feeling down. That shoulder to cry on when they have a hard day, being there for them through thick and thin. I always find it fascinating when people talk about how great things are when they're little or as children and how the world is such a big place and it's so exciting. But you can do that every day of your life by opening yourself up to change, not getting too rigid and set in your ways. Look at every day as something new to learn because we're all children. We're not grown-ups. You could have children, grandchildren. There's always going to be someone or something out there that knows more than you do. And that makes us all children. And that's it. Okay, two things, that's all. You want a great relationship, you want a soulmate, you want true love, you want to never fight. That's it, two things. A lot of people can say to me, you know what, I have done all these things. My relationship still is not where it should be. And if that is genuinely true and that you are being kind, then honestly, there's only one answer and that is you're with the wrong person. You're with someone who's not willing to be loving to look at their demons, to wrestle with their weaknesses. And you need to leave. And I know that's hard to hear because no one wants to feel like a failure. No one wants to let go. But in life, you often reach crossroads where you have to make a choice. And you can stay in misery or you can move forward. And it doesn't mean that you're giving up. Staying with someone who's not willing to be loving to you is giving up. Life is short. Don't be with someone or waste your time with someone who won't look at themselves accurately and honestly and makes you their scapegoat. You can't save them. Everyone has to save themselves. There's only so much we can each do to help each other. If we are not willing to be open-minded and to do the work that's necessary, then love will just not happen.